School is back in session, and it's pass or fail at this campus. Pass and you live, fail and you die. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're taking some courses at Hell High. Shot in 1985, but not released until 1989, two years after star Christopher Stryker's death, Hell High stands as one of the more interesting school-based slasher films. This one feels more like a budget John Hughes riff on something like River's Edge than a straight slasher film, but it's pretty entertaining regardless. But enough about that. Can Hell High I graduate with a 5.0 barf bag GPA? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Peter Benson, Michael Dean Jackson, I was going to try the MJ falsetto there, but no dice, and Dom Bailey. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny and the endless stream of bogus copyright claims I deal with, you'll find the link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on this title card. Real trouble. That sounds like a lame ABC TGIF sitcom. Did someone swap my disc? This is supposed to be Hell High, starring Christopher Stryker, who would pass away at 27 years old two years before this film's release. Maureen Mooney was pregnant for most of the shoot, so pregnant in fact that they had to hide her belly in some of the later scenes. Hey, it's Christopher Cousins, aka a young Ted Beneke from Breaking Bad. Not gonna lie, I'm digging this soundtrack. Produced by Douglas Grossman and David Steinman. Shame we couldn't get the trifecta with George Eastman. Directed by Grossman too. I mean really, is there a better last name for a horror film director than Grossman? It's literally Grossman smashed together. And we open with the always popular house establishing shot. I hope you poured your drink. And as an added bonus, here's some exposition. Brock. I don't want you running off. Cindy Brady and her kitty carry all aren't listening to that disembodied voice though. I'm sure this is gonna end well, right? Uh, I guess we'll just watch her walk to the swamp in real time. I mean, sure, take your time, movie. I'll wait. I will say that it's nice that she got dressed up to go play in the swamp, though. Man, this movie isn't even 90 minutes long, and like 75 of it are just this kid walking around in search of the inciting incident. Any day now, movie. Ah, oh, she just needed to drop a load. Seems weird to put the outhouse so far away from the main house. Inside, we see she's gonna be a great mom. Alright, <laughs> smacking this kid around. But it turns out this isn't just an outhouse, it's basically a B-52 song as these kids arrive for a little makeout sesh. Christ, I hate the B-52s. At any rate, Cindy Brady doesn't cotton to home invaders, so she's like, here's mud in your eye. <laughs> Man, talk about bad luck. An entire empty field and they manage to wind up impaled on these stakes like a couple of bugs. Now we head back to the future, aka 18 years later, and with a school establishing shot. Inside, these kids are studying some biology. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. They're in biology class. And our instructor looks like the science teacher in every 80s heavy metal video or adult film ever. She's all business now, but you know she parties. Stryker, meanwhile, collects the tests. Dude was on Welcome Back Cotter in 77. Guess he really got held back a lot if he's still in high school in the late 80s. And here's another great moment in horror film acting. Class, class, what does it take to reach you people? She's had enough of Stryker and she gives him a taste of her pimp hand. Man, school was wild in the 80s. Teachers were just doling out pimp hands left and right. Well, there goes my tenure. Wait, this isn't water, this is formaldehyde. Damn it. After class, Stryker is a walking hell yeah setup. I'm gonna stick it to that bitch. After more hijinks, he recruits Ted Beneke into his crew. Come on, we're gonna break into the computer lab later and make all the PCs say boobs. Meanwhile, Coach is shooting a shot with Miss Pimp Hands. Uh, later, we could go out and uh, do anything you might like. But he's getting shut down. I, I can take care of myself, thank you. And with that, he's off to play with his balls. Hell yeah. No, his footballs. Out in the parking lot, Stryker's drinking some J&D, not J&B. Teacher lady heads home, and Stryker and Ted are following her. This should be ominous, but this music sounds more like sitcom montage than horror movie. I'm definitely getting fall break flashbacks here. We're going on a fall break. And continuing Hell High's tradition of drawing out everything, let's just follow her in real time. I mean, you didn't have anything else to do today anyway, right? Eventually, they arrive, and hey, this looks suspiciously like the house we established in the opening scene. Stryker and Ted then demonstrate why they flunked out of ninja school. Um, guys, you are totally visible. They can see you from like six houses down the block. Then this basically turns into porkies as they watch her shower. 
They probably should have just cast Linnea Quigley. I mean, she's right at home in a shower scene. Anyway, all the rub-a-dub dubbing is interrupted by a phone call. Maybe it's the plot calling so we can finally get this movie rolling. And since this movie wasn't really going anywhere anyway, might as well go for another drive. I feel like no one told Doug Grossman about the magic of editing. Honestly, this feels more like a John Hughes movie than a horror film at this point. I mean, listen to this terrible song. I got her. He finally pulls over. Maybe it's so he can ask for directions to the interesting part of this movie. No one answer, so he just lets himself in. He's a white guy. I'm sure this will be fine. God, pushiest Mormon ever. The reason she can't come to the door is because she's busy getting ready for her flash dance audition. She's a maniac. She's definitely a flash dancer too, as she flashes him some body double boobs. I can't show you that, but the actress got cold feet, or maybe cold chest, on the day of the shoot. They had to get stunt boobs for the shot. Normally, this is where we go to football practice, but instead, we're going straight to the game. Najee Harris with the carry, and he's stuffed after a two-yard gain. Let's check in with sideline reporter Christopher Stryker for an injury update. Thanks, Troy. This guy's all fucked up. Coach says he's questionable for the second half. Back to you, Troy. And our biology teacher is here. She looks like she's having a great time. I mean, I've seen people getting tortured in cartel videos who look happier than her. And apparently, Doug Grossman doesn't want us to miss a second of the riveting action on the gridiron. They break the huddle on third and long. Let's see if the Raiders can dial up a first down. Oh my god, it's a gadget play. There's a car on the field. He could go all the way. I'm not seeing any flags on the play, Troy. I think this one is going to stand unless there's a league review from the booth. Since they only had one ball, I guess that's going to wrap things up from here at Myers Field. Your Hell High Raiders remain undefeated. Next week is Grudge Week as they square off against the Voorhees High Slashers. Also, when does this turn into a horror movie? I'm just asking for a friend. And if this were a John Hughes movie, this is where the freeze frame ending would happen. Next, they head off for some training. Literally. So, you want to see a dead body? Way wrong movie. Back at Miss Storm's place, Coach isn't taking the hint that he's not going to score tonight either. While Coach is lamenting his lack of offense, Dickens and the kids have wandered into a Claudio Fragasso film, judging by this level of fog. <laughs> Bet there are a bunch of nilbogs out here. Oh my god! Um, Ted, that's a sewage leak. Probably gonna want to get some gloves. Discount Shelly from Friday the 13th Part 3 seems to have found yet another burr sewage pipe. The EPA is gonna have a field day with this place. But he won't have to harvest his sewage alone. Someone's gonna lend him a hand. And <laughs> don't look now, but I think the cameraman got lost. <laughs> Why does this sound like the music from Full Metal Jacket? Queenie, is that you? Anyway, Dickens is gonna turn this twosome into a threesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he comes in with the C block. <laughs> and then he gets slimed. Hell yeah. With the sewage. Settle down, pervs. And with that, they're out. I guess you could call this a field trip. I don't want to alarm anyone, but we're basically halfway through Hell High, and this feels more like a weird teen dramedy than a horror movie. But maybe things are finally going to pick up, because it looks like our delinquents have arrived at the teacher's house. After a bunch of jibber-jabber, we finally get rolling. We're going to slime her house and scare her with the legend of the swamp. Miss Storm, meanwhile, is busy editing Dickens' first draft. Clearly, this early version of the Pickwick Papers needs more work. Oh yeah, we're getting literary, kids. Um, it's usually helpful if you sneak in under the cover of shadow and darkness, but sure, let's just try it out in the open with the lights on. <laughs> it's like fucking midday out here. I'll say this, Dickens' Sideshow Bob cosplay is pretty sweet. They head up on the roof, and Miss Storm's all like, Santa, is that you? Up on the roof, they're jumping around like they're in House of Pain. Miss Storm is not pleased. God damn it, Lionel Richie, what have I told you about dancing on my ceiling? And now it's slime time. Then she takes a load to the face. Hell yeah. No, I mean of slime. Wait, that still sounds dirty. It's kind of like she's wandered into an old episode of You Can't Do That on Television. Oh, and if you guess Miss Storm is the little girl who killed the bikers from the start of the movie, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Hey, she looks just like the lady covered in pea soup from beyond the door. Hijinks are interrupted when Miss Storm's friend shows up. What happened to you? They slimed me. To help settle her nerves, they have a spa day. Who doesn't love spa day? 
Her friend bails, but Dickens is still lurking around the old bleak house. Then he heads inside to fulfill his great expectations. Ted Beneke is getting impatient, though. What could Dickens be doing? Dickens is Dickensing around, would be my guess. No telling what that Dickens is up to. Probably just plotting a tale of two cities. Back inside, it's like a Van Halen song, as he's clearly hot for teacher. <laughs> Do kids even remember hot for teacher? Christ, I'm old. And Queenie gets in on the act, too. This is the weirdest anatomy class ever. Ted shows up before things get out of hand, and a rousing game of grab-ass ensues. Well, they're tussling like a couple of guys who got cut from the JV wrestling squad, Miss Storm tries out for the dive team. Well, the form was good, it's just too bad she missed the pool. With Miss Storm apparently dead, you could say these guys are headed for some hard times. Can I cram more Dickens titles into this video? Place your bets now. After that, the film basically morphs into I Know What You Did Last Summer as Dickens tries to cover up their crime. And his master plan? Frame the quarterback. You know, the guy who basically had one scene in this movie so far. Totally makes sense. Back in Miss Storm's place, she's hard at work on her lawn gnome cosplay. It needs some work. Anyway, these guys are clearly master criminals. Let's all go back to the crime scene and leave more DNA and fingerprint evidence. And since we've got nothing better to do, let's just watch these people eat while rocking out on the soundtrack. Oh, it's a stealth mission. I hope Solid Ted doesn't get spotted. He gets the goods and clearly he's feeling pretty deflated. Then we get the most exciting slow speed pursuit since OJ and the Bronco. OJ and the Bronco? Really? That's some timely topical humor. Back at the house, Dickens is famished, so he's eating some wiener. Hell yeah. No, I mean this raw hot dog. Wait, <laughs> I gotta be honest. Hell High isn't much of a horror movie so far. Now we're just sitting around the house leaving more forensic evidence. And if you guess Miss Storm was still alive, give yourself another screenwriter's credit. Football practice! Queenie's had enough and heads out, but in a real Oliver twist, she realizes Miss Storm isn't dead after all. And not only is she not dead, she's deadly. Heard your kids like rock music. How's this sound? You could say Queenie got stoned. And I never knew Kermit was into bondage. This explains a lot. The thrilling car chase then finally reaches its explosive conclusion. I had no idea there was a Pinto motorcycle. I don't want to alarm anyone, but we're in the last act of Hell High, and I feel like even the cast has lost interest in wrapping this thing up. Ted finally arrives, and he finds Queenie. We're gonna need David Copperfield's magic to bring her back to life. Okay, you could say we killed two birds with one stone with that reference. Three if you count Queenie. And then Ted gets the stiff arm pimp hand. Back inside, we learn Ted, aka John John, is apparently Chuck Norris. So where's John John? He's missing in action. All this excitement is interrupted because those big bean burritos Smiler ate earlier are about to make a return appearance. But before he can drop the kids off at the pool, he gets to experience a totally different kind of number two when Miss Storm jams this pencil in his head. He's gonna need to get the lead out. Feels like she made her point. And now she's coming for Dickens. Stick around, pal. We're gonna have to make some cuts to your new manuscript. At any rate, it looks like Dickens is about to bleed for his art. But before she can turn him into Slim Goodbody, Ted arrives and it's lights out. Literally. With Dickens freed, he makes his move, and they wind up killing each other. Best of times and worst of times indeed. Fortunately, Ted survives and will go on to run his dad's company into the ground and have an affair with Skylar White. And they already found a new teacher? Miss Draper? Is this part of the Mad Men universe too? And in one last swerve, they actually arrest the quarterback. Why'd he frame him too? He was home free. That's a real dick move, Ted. Anyway, since we need to pad the runtime, we get a montage of the deaths and Ted freaking out. Bold move to end with a school establishing shot, too. So, what have we learned from our semester at Hell High? Well, for starters, the teachers could slap the shit out of kids in the 80s with absolutely no repercussions. What a time. Hell High is a pretty good movie, but it's not much of a horror movie. All the horror elements are sort of rushed into the opening and closing moments, and the bulk of the film is sort of a weird teen drama. It's a bit of a disappointment as a horror film, but it's a pretty good movie in a general sense. But enough about that. Can Hell High earn enough extra credit on the final to get a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Hell High is pretty middle of the road. We're treated to multiple impalings, one rock bludgeoning, a pencil to the skull, and a throat slash. The FX work is pretty solid, but there's only enough here to give Hell High a middle of the road three barf bag rating. It passes, but not with high honors. Looking for another school slasher? Then be sure to check out my review of Slaughter High. You'll find the link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.